In this video, I'm gonna show you how to make this adorable two-dimensional fondant Mickey. Hi, it's Carolyn. If you wanna learn how to bake and decorate amazing cakes, then I would love for you to join me by hitting subscribe and the bell. And real quick, if you wanna just skip the intro and get right into the video, there are chapters linked below. In this video, I am making a fondant Mickey, a two-dimensional fondant. I like working with two-dimensional figures rather than 3D, and I'm gonna teach you my process on how I do that. Now, I work with marshmallow fondant, and I have videos showing you how I make that, and I will link it below. And all of my fondant has Tylose powder mixed into it. The Tylose powder is going to help the fondant set a little harder, so as you cut the pieces out, it's not going to drag. It's very, very important that you do have some kind of Tylose powder, gum tex, CMC powder. It all helps to stiffen the fondant. Now, I have found that I work with marshmallow fondant. Store-bought fondant tends to be pretty soft, so if you use satin ice or Wilton or something like that, you may need to use a little bit more Tylose powder uh, to, to be able to get it to a harder consistency. It's not gonna be solid, like rock hard. It's just gonna be easy for you to cut uh, pieces out. And the picture that I use will be linked in the description below. So let's get into the video. I am starting with clean hands and I have my bucket of fondant here. This is all marshmallow fondant and I keep it in little plastic bags. Um, this fondant I've already colored and used and it does have Tylose powder mixed into it. So I'm gonna get all the colors that I need and then seal that back up. And I'm gonna put that in the microwave for about 20 seconds to soften up the fondant, sprinkle down some cornstarch and knead the fondant once it's soft and I want to roll it all out uh, pretty thin and you can see how thin it is here and do that for all the colors set that aside for the black I want to roll out a little bit more just because I have to put a background on the Mickey I measured my cake and I'm printed Mickey out the size that I want him to be I have my cutting board with a piece of non-slip pad underneath so it doesn't slide around a wet paper towel and exacto knife so I could wipe off the blade and a Dresden tools is my favorite tool I could find a similar one they don't make this one a needle tool and a paintbrush and a little bit of water so let's start with the skin tone colored fondant. I'm gonna put Mickey down on top of it, make sure it's completely on the fondant. Use my Dresden tool and I'm gonna trace the outline first. And I'm going right around the edge where that skin colored skin color is. Peel it back, make sure it's transferring, and then I wanna make sure I get the inside pieces, like all the, all the inside detail. So the mouth, the eye, all those little lines. Now I just want to look at the picture and take my Dresden tool, I'm using the pointy end, and just deepen those uh, detail lines a little bit. So with the eye and the mouth, I want to cut it out because I'm gonna put in the eye and the mouth. So it, it just looks better if you cut the fondant out rather than just sticking the other pieces on top. So once you remove it, it's a little jagged. So I'm gonna take my tools and take my fingers and just smooth out all my cuts and do the same thing for the mouth. And now I want to just cut the entire thing out. So I'm uh, taking my X-Acto knife and carefully doing that once it's all cut out, I want to smooth my cuts. That's what I do every time. So anytime I cut anything out of fondant, I'm going to take the time and smooth my cut so it looks nice and pretty. And now let's do the white pieces. So you see on here, I'm gonna do the eye and I'm gonna make sure I do a little line for the pupil and the hands and the little buttons on the shorts. So when I'm doing this, look, I'm making sure I do the outside first and then I wanna make sure I get all the inner details as well. And you don't wanna to press too hard. You don't wanna poke a hole in the fondant here when you're doing this. Just enough to transfer the line onto the fondant. 
And then I want to take my Dresden tool just to deepen the line so I can see it a, be a little better and take an edible marker and I want to color in the pupil. I find it a little easier just to color in these tiny pieces rather than to cut a piece of fondant out. And when I'm coloring, I'm not using the point, the tip, I'm using the side of it so I don't mess up the fondant. And again, deepening all the details in the pieces before I cut them out. And then using my knife and cutting out all the pieces, smooth my cuts. So I'm going to do that for all of the pieces. All of this fondant, like I said, it has Tylos powder mixed into it. Your fondant must have Tylos powder in it because it's going to hold its shape and it's not really going to drag when you cut it. So these little pieces can get a little challenging to work with. I want to make sure that I don't mess up the pupil because it could still be a little wet. And now I can stick that inside the little face. And let's move on to the red pieces. So I'm going to do the same thing. So you see that the tongue is red, the shorts are red. So I'm going to grab the color and just trace the pieces. Make sure you get the inside details. Deepen the details, cut them out. Smooth it with your fingers. It's the same process for all the pieces on here. And now I'm gonna cut out the shoes. So same process, tracing everything. Do I have to keep saying this? You guys know the process. <laughs> All right, now we're gonna do the black part and this is, can get a little bit confusing. So I'm gonna to try to explain this. So any part that I can see that is black, I'm tracing exactly um, on the outline because that's a part that you, you will be able to see. And then anywhere where there is a color, I don't wanna trace around the edge because I want the piece to be able to stick out and not the black piece. So I'm going underneath where there's any color. This will make sense as I do it. But look, as I'm coming down, you could see the black there, and then I'm like continuing the line where the body would be. That makes a little bit more sense, right? So like, what does his body look like without these clothes on top? And once I put the pieces on, it will cover it up. This is gonna look very weird. As I'm tracing the tail, I'm doing it a little bit thicker so it doesn't break. And the same thing, just you could see where the lines are, where the black is showing, I'm going exactly around the edge. As I peel this away, it's gonna look really weird, but just trust the process. <laughs> and I, I wanna make sure I cut the nose out as well. So let's do that first, trace that, smooth it, and cut it out, or cut it and smooth it. And then I wanna uh, trace the inside detail like I keep doing. I'm gonna cut this entire thing out. And that's basically his naked body and we're gonna dress him. <laughs> so I wanna put him on a piece of black fondant, make sure that there's enough that I can get a black outline around the entire thing. And I have a wet paintbrush. So what I'm doing, I'm lifting little pieces up and painting underneath and then putting it back down. It's a lot easier to get him in position and then put water underneath. So same thing, I'm put, putting the shoes in the right position first. And once they're in the right position, then I can lift them up and get water underneath. If you just wet the back and then put it down, it's going to be difficult to get them in the correct position where they need to be. And do the same thing for the shorts. So what I like to do is look at the picture for a reference. Where does the top, the top of the shorts meets under the armpit, the side of the shorts meets on the side, you know? So I always have the picture for a reference. I'm going to put the little glove piece there. And that piece is so small that I can get water on it first and then put it down. So I'm just 
piecing him together. Like I, I have the picture, I'm looking to see the position of the hand, making sure that it's in the right position. And with these smaller pieces, like I said, I could just put water on the entire thing and put it down. Right, now with the face again I want to make sure that I have it in the right spot look at the picture see that there's a little bit of black showing at the top so just aligning it first peel it back get water underneath just like I did before it's very important you get these pieces in the correct space or they are just it, Mickey will look a little bit off I want to smooth any edges I want to shade everything shading your pieces is going to make it's going to bring it to life going to make it look so much better I have this terracotta petal dust a tiny paintbrush and this stuff a little goes a long way so I like to dip it in there wipe it on a piece of paper tap it off you know just make sure there's not too much color and I'm looking at the picture so I'm coloring it um I'm coloring in the shoes looking at the picture you see how the bottom of the shoes have a little bit of orange to them I'm adding a little bit of dimension to the face with a little bit of this and a light touch I'm telling you you can't remove it once you put it on so it's better to just use a little bit and build it up and then I'm using this teeny teeny paintbrush to get inside of the lines I have this chocolate dust I don't know if they still make this exact brand however I could try to find similar dust and link it below So do you see how this is just bringing out the piece? It just makes it look so much better when you use these petal dust and take the time to, to basically uh, color it in. All right, I have to have a really, this really thin, tiny paintbrush to get the details in here. I will find, I will try to find this one and link it below. I think I actually cut the bristles on this to make it even a little smaller. So when I'm dipping this into the powder, I dip it and then I wipe it on something just to get rid of the excess. And let's get a little bit of black and do the same thing for the hand and the shorts. And the colors that I know to use, if you look in the picture, you could see the hand is colored in with black, the face is colored in with brown. Um, so I'm just going off by the, I'm going by the picture to figure out how to shade this in. now I have a little bit of pink and around the edges of his mouth it is a little bit of pink so I'm just shading that in as well and I totally forgot his uh, eyeliner <laughs> around here there's a little brown line going around it so I'm just filling that in as well and I'm trying to get the edges of the face because if you look on the picture the edges are basically outlined in a little bit of brown and it doesn't have to be perfect. 
and stick his nose on there. Now he looks like Mickey and get, I, I just rolled a little piece of white fondant in my fingers and trying to make it into an oval shape, get a little bit of water on the back and put that down to give that little shiny part of his nose. Now I have my X-Acto knife and I'm getting close. You could see my glasses. <laughs> I need to make sure that I'm cutting an even border the entire way around Mickey. And even I'm cutting a border around the tail, around all the parts of here, even the black parts. Peel that away, flip it over and smooth it out. And do the same thing on the other side, just making sure all the cuts are smooth. There's a little piece that wasn't stuck down there. So get a little bit of water behind it and stick it down. Make sure that it's stuck to that uh, black piece in the back. And there is Mickey, how adorable is he? If you want to dry him with a shape, you could put it on a cake dummy. That dummy is not big enough, so I'm going to stick him in a Ziploc bag for a couple hours until I'm ready to put him on the cake. So there you go. How adorable is Mickey? I just love him so much. And I have to say, the whole process is pretty easy of the tracing, cutting, and smoothing your pieces. The most challenging part, like I said in the video, is where you have to get that body, the black body, where you have to kind of look past the pieces and draw the line. The reason that I make the body a little smaller is so when I put the clothes on top, it goes over it. So there isn't any black sticking out underneath. And I hope that makes sense, but it's just my like weird little mind. <laughs> this is just how I do it. So I hope it wasn't too confusing for you. Now to store it, I put it in that plastic bag until I'm ready to put it on the cake. It's still gonna be a little soft and pliable. If you want it to dry hard, like I showed you, you can find a cake dummy the size of the cake that you're putting it on and dry it on that. Or if you want to, you could just dry it flat and have it uh, be flat when you stick it on the cake. So it, it wouldn't contour to the cake, but either way is fine. I've done all of them. And to stick it onto the cake, I'm just gonna get a little bit of icing or piping gel on the back to be able to stick it on. A one, there's my Philly accent. <laughs> And here's my little fondant storage box. I did get this uh, container on Amazon. I'll try to find it <laughs> and link it below. I store my fondant inside of Ziploc bags and then inside of this airtight container. It helps prevent it from drying out. Now, when I use fondant and like if I color fondant and I have some left over and it's still good, I'm gonna keep it. I'm not gonna throw it away. I can reuse it. If I can, I can still use the fondant when I know that I can squeeze it and it can still give. When it starts to get a little too hard, like this white fondant, I can throw it out. Like it's a little too hard. <laughs> so that was like, that was weird. <laughs> but once the fondant gets too hard, then I know it's done. Just throw that out and I'm not going to use it anymore. But once, if it's still pliable when it's soft, then I know that I can continue to use it. And all of this fondant does have Tylos powder mixed into it because I've been using it on other decorations. And all the stuff that I use is going to be linked below. Petal dust, I'm telling you, it just brings life to your pieces rather than just having your flat fondant. It, it looks very plain. Um, coloring it in, it's like giving a little makeup, <laughs> right? It just makes it all look better. So I will find some similar petal dust and link those below. And this did not take me 15 minutes to make. With the magic of editing, <laughs> I cut it down really short. It was probably like an hour to an hour and 15 minutes from, from start to finish. So I think that's it. If you guys have any questions or comments, leave them below. And you can keep in touch on social media and check out my website. It's listed in the description below as well. <laughs> and if you want to stick around, you can watch these two videos next and hit subscribe and the bell if you haven't already. Please like this video if you liked it. Thank you so much for watching. And remember, it's cake. Have fun. I will see you on the next one. Bye.